Ate, yung mga anak ko, yung contrition ko ng anak ko, yung mga anak ko, yung mga tuto kang magbawas ng mga 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 loob niya. It's about time. Go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and, and get started. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, tonight is the last few days, the last few hours of your life here on earth. That you will anoint your word as it goes out. Anoint my lips, our hearts to receive. And we'll thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, this is going to be a relatively short lesson tonight. I only got one hand, and since it takes two hands for me to talk, it's going to be cut in half. So, I figure it's going to be a pretty short one tonight. Uh, also, the material uh, isn't really deep. We're not going to get into a lot of deep stuff tonight. It's pretty much what it says. disciples have made the journey from the upper room over on mountain the area of Mount Zion uh, on the way he has he has he did three specific things first of all he taught them the most important things and the, the summary the culmination of his ministry the most important things they needed to know was crucified and so when we look at those and, and we we talk. He talks about the vine and the and the root and the branches. We look at that and we look at everything he taught, and it kind of pulls it all together, and says, "Here's really what counts: is that you're part of the vine. You're you're with me, and that that the same spirit that flows will flow in you. And the sum total of why we do this is so you can bear fruit. Uh, we lose track of that sometimes. We think." We, we have the Spirit of God in us so we can feel good or we can overcome our problems or God can provide for us or any one of a number of things. But when you boil it all up, in his letters, the reason for the Spirit, the reason it was given, is so we bear fruit. That's what it's all about. If we want to please the Father, Jesus said you have to keep his commandments and you have to do what he said. The commandments was, love your neighbor. And you let the Spirit flow through you, you will bear fruit. Um, and then, he preached to them, he prayed for them. And you remember it was a prayer uh, that they're going to be going through some things. And he prayed, I pray, Lord, that, uh, pray, Father, that And I will be in them as you are in me and I am in you. It gets confusing when you just look at it. What was he talking about? But you have to go back to the vine. And when you go back to the vine, and now it makes perfect sense. That that's and we have that same relationship with him that Jesus has with the Father. Talking here about flesh, the Son of God, Son of man, not divinity. So the same spirit that flowed in the flesh of Jesus Christ flows in us. And we have that same relationship. <clears throat> we had finished that prayer. They arrived at the Garden of Eden. A Garden of Eden. Yeah, we have Garden of Gethsemane. And you remember then Jesus uh, left some of his disciples. <coughs> Peter, James, and John went a little bit further. Gethsemane prayer, which knows about the prayer in, in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he swept, as he, he uh, sweat, as it were, great drops of blood. But again, we have to remember that prayer was not a prayer of divinity to divinity; it was humanity to divinity, because he had already prayed for his disciples, and he, in that prayer, he had already said, "You know, I'm going to a glorious time." Uh, you know, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to, we're going to do all these wonderful things. And then he gets to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he says, Oh, if it's possible, let this cut fast from me. One was divinity, looking at what was going to happen from the divine side. The other one, what was going to happen from the flesh side. <coughs> and so, <Okay. coughs> 
we see that prayer and we understand praying was <coughs> was from the, the idea of the flesh having to suffer. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, and you remember it three different times he came back to Peter, James, and John, and they, they couldn't stay awake. He asked them to stay awake with him. Thank you. <coughs> awake and pray with him, and they couldn't do it. They, they, they couldn't even watch. He didn't even ask them to do much pray at first. He just said, well, just watch. Just be on guard. You know, just be ready. They couldn't even do that. <coughs> so, um, <coughs> what we come to now is he has finished that prayer. <coughs> and uh, he, 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 was, he woke up his disciples. And he says, all right, the time has come. Get on your feet. We've got to go. And while he was speaking, this is where we take off this evening. So we're going to start in Matthew chapter 26. Now you'll notice I've elongated this because there are several things that happen in here. And uh, when you read all four of the Gospels, you can put them all together, but it's a little hard to get them in the right order. So I kind of uh, stretch this out for you so you can kind of where each one falls <coughs> in the order of, of, how it, of what happens. So let's start with Matthew 26, beginning with verse 47. And while he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Uh, now his betrayer had given them a sign, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him. Immediately he went up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. He said to him, Friend, why have you? Then they came and laid hands on him. Now we skip. Uh, and suddenly one of those who were with Jesus and drew his sword the servant on the, of the high priest and cut off his ear. Put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I will not pray to my father, and he will provide me with more than twelve legions of angels? How then could the scripture be fulfilled that it must happen thus. He said to the multitudes, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple, and you did not seize me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Now let's look at what Mark has to say. And immediately, while he was still speaking, as Jesus still speaking to the disciples, waking them up, uh, speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now this, now his prayer had given them a signal saying, Whoever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him and lead him away safely. As soon as he had come, immediately he went up to him and him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then, then they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of, of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Have you come out and be fulfilled. So then they all forsook him and fled. Now a certain young man followed him, having a linen cloth thrown about his naked body. And the young men laid hold of him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. Uh, Luke, he, he gives us a little more information 
And this is starting in Luke 22, starting with verse 47. <clears throat> and while he was still speaking, behold, a multitude, and he who was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Then those around him saw what was going to happen. They said to him, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus answered and said, Permit even this. His ear and healed him. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I was daily, uh, no, I'm sorry, wrong, I'm wrong column. Jump over to the next one. Jesus said to the chief priests, captains of the temple, and the elders who had come to him, You did not try to seize me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Now we come to my favorite writer, John. Because what we've seen uh, ha has been primarily from the visual part, the physical thing. John is the one who writes from a spiritual perspective. And listen to what John says. Betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. Then Judas, having re received a detachment of truce, chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all are you seeking? The answer Jesus of Nazareth said to them, I am he. And betrayed him also stood with them. Now when he drew back and fell to the ground. And they said, Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you ask me, please go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spoke. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant. Drink the cup which my father has And a mob. Judas and a mob. <laughs> now this mob wasn't just a bunch of riffraff they picked up off the street. They were actually sent by the high priests and the, the Jewish leaders. Now notice something. Uh, it's important that we note this because he came into the garden with all these Roman soldiers and, and everybody. But I want you to notice something. This, this mob was armed with clubs and swords as if they were expecting a fight. Now, I, I'm sitting here and I'm saying, you know, 
John noticed that and makes note that uh, Judas knew where they were because Jesus came quite often with his disciples. So Judas should know that there wasn't going to be four or five hundred people there. There was going to be Jesus and twelve disciples. Eleven, because he wasn't going to be there. And there might be a few more followers that, that came. And yet here they come with their clothes and a whole multitude, I mean a mob. They're, they're, they're expecting to have to fight. They brought their torches so they can make sure they found everybody. But, but, but Jesus, uh, he had uh, of resisting or, or of, of doing anything. In fact, you know, to, G, to Peter, he made this statement that he, wanted, he all he had to do was ask the Father, um, and he would have 12 legions of mm -hmm. soldiers, of angels, angels rather. Yeah. Now, there, there's an interesting thing here also, if you'll notice. It says that the leaders, they sent captains and officers from the temple. These would be temple guards. These would be defended the, uh, the, the Jewish, you know, they guarded the, the temple mount at night. They were the ones in all the positions that guarded the temple mount. Uh, if they needed to violating the religious laws of the Jews, this is who they would use was the temple guards. We could call them policemen. These were kind of policemen. And they were also at the call of the city elders. So when uh, uh, Judas went before the Jewish leaders, what he ended up with was, number one, a mob. These were just common people, you know, that, 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 that they had stirred up and they had their clubs and they had their a band of soldiers. This band, uh, the word band means cohort. Now, cohort represents between 300 and cohort. Many feel that these were Roman soldiers. However, notice these Roman soldiers were under the and officers. Rome was not on friendly terms with, at least that friendly of terms, <laughs> with the uh, leaders of the temple. A cohort of soldiers, which consisted of both soldiers, uh, foot soldiers, and anyone other than a centurion. The one thing that is not mentioned here is a centurion. He was the lowest officer in terms of the army. Now, when I say lowest officer, I'm not talking about anything that would be over the troops. You'd have the troops, then you'd have the centurions, and there was levels of centurions, and then you would go up from there to the different hierarchy of the military. and there are several writers that agree with me, could not possibly have been Roman soldiers that were sent out there. Another thing was, it only mentions they had swords. Roman soldiers were the best equipped soldiers on, on the planet at that stage. They didn't just have swords. They had spears. Mm -hmm. They had shields. They had armor. I mean, if they went out, they went out preparing to do some damage. Temple guards, on the other hand, yeah. They didn't need, and they had maybe a helmet that was made more out of cloth than anything else. They didn't really, they were not really going out to do battle. Think about our police officers today. Other than a gun, yeah, of course not today, in today's world, you know, they're wearing bullets and all kinds of, but the idea is they were there to keep the peace, mm -hmm. not to go to war. Also, <laughs> we find out that there were the chief priests themselves came along because that's who Jesus talked to in John's account. 
So the chief priests came along with the elders. Now this is an interesting little thing here that the chief the religion were over the religious statements and what whatever went on in the temple and the synagogues. The elders were over the cities. They would be your uh, city council or uh, you know whatever they mayor you know those kinds of things. These were considered the elders. They were usually the older and wiser, and so they were put into these positions in the city. So what we see represented here um, that the high priest sent out were representatives of the religion, they were representatives of the city, and, and there were the policemen that were coming to arrest Jesus. And then you had a mob that was there for whatever reason they decided they needed him. Uh, they're, they're the ones that kind of are out of place a little bit, or overkill, if you want. But we'll find out in a little bit why exactly all of these people were there. Now, notice uh, we have kind of two accounts here. But John, I like John's account because it's... Um, uh, oh, and by the way, the elders, uh, are, are the, 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 uh, the priests, they were members of the Sanhedrin court. The elders were members of the city court. And so if there was a dispute in the city, they took care of it. If there was a religious dispute, Sanhedrin took care of it. All right? So here again we see the religious and the civil courts. They both have representatives out there. Now John tells us that when they entered the garden, uh, Jesus went to meet them. They came to look in all the crevices and everywhere to try to find him, and here he waits for them, and then he goes to them to talk to them. And when they answered, they asked him a question. They said, uh, you know, to him, he asked them, "Who, who are you? Who are you looking for? Who is it you want?" And they say, he say, well, we want Jesus of Nazareth. Now, to me, that's a little strange in one respect uh, because you would they know who that was already. He'd been in the city. He'd been teaching in the synagogue. Been teaching in the temple. you think they know and recognize who he was. Obviously, these were not people that had ever heard Jesus teach. They have done and never been around him. This was early in the morning, probably 8 o'clock in the morning, and uh, so this temple guards were probably the night shift. And it never says Jesus was in the temple teaching at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. So they had him. This was the night shift. Um, and so they said, Jesus Nazareth, and he answered them and said, I am he. Now, I want you to notice a little... You know, you have to kind of pay attention in, in versions of the Bible. Um, I kind of like King James. I always read King James because it tells you what was added and what was not in the original text. If you see something that is in little brackets, a word, like in this case, me, it means it wasn't in the original text. The, the interpreters, the translators, put that in to add uh, so understanding. He said, I am he. In other words, I'm answering the question. I am he. But I don't think Jesus meant to answer the question with the he. If you leave the he off, what you have is, I am. Now, you may say, well, that doesn't mean anything. Except that John goes on to tells us that as soon as he said, I am, what happened? Boo. Boo. All hit the deck. Yeah. And, and evidently Judas too. Yeah. What does that bring back to memory? You remember when Moses went to the burning bush and, and God said, send you to Egypt? He says, well, who am I supposed to say sent me? He didn't say Yahweh or Jehovah. Or Anadonai, or names for God that we use. He said, I am. I am. The Hebrew word for 
I am at together literally means the present one. You know what the Greek one means? Mm. The present. Mm. You see what Jesus was saying here, well, while he was answering their questions, I'm the one you're looking for, he was also saying, I am the present God. I'm not the God of yesterday. I'm not the God of yes tomorrow. I am the present. I am always present. Action as they're all being cast down to the ground. Only divinity could do that. When he said, I am, that means I am the creator. I am the sustainer. I am the one that is ever present. I am the omniscient one. I go on and on and on and on. Yeah. Wow. Now I don't know about you. I, I, I question some of these people in the old time. I, I really wonder if they weren't. Maybe they were descendants of Neanderthals with the brains <laughs> that didn't develop. I don't. Know. But you know, if I was in that situation and I'm standing there. And th this man says, I am, and I said, they get knocked to the ground. Do you think under any circumstances I'm going to get up and challenge him again? <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say, okay, whoever you are, I'm out of here. But they didn't. Now, he didn't give me a chance to get up, of course. Uh, but uh, he asked him again, who are you looking for? I've already told you that I am He. If I am, then you let these other guys go. If, if He had said, if I am He, when He actually put the He on that, then you might say He's saying, I'm the one you want, so let the others go. Yeah. But when He said, I am, let the others go, that becomes not a request, that becomes a warning. Touch him and see what happens the next time I am speaks. You see the difference? Very, very small, very small detail, but it carries all the difference in the world. It does. And remember, he was also doing this. But because his disciples were sitting here who are about to go through the worst days of their life and he's saying I am and look at the power look at what happened wow yeah. tremendous now um, that saying he says he said, after admitting that he was the one they sought, he requested, <laughs> through a warning, <laughs> that those with him be allowed to leave, so the saying in John 17, 12 might be fulfilled. What was that saying? I have lost yeah. none of the ones you gave me. None of them. Uh, all right. Now, Judas had prearranged that the one he kissed was Jesus. And when he did so, the soldiers arrested him. Uh, now, we see a little thing in here also that Luke tells us that the others don't mention. And that is that when they saw what was going to happen, that he was going to be arrested, they said to him, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? Now, here again, you kind of question. Except in this case, I think uh, we have some examples that these, these disciples might have been thinking about. Here you have between three and six hundred soldiers, policemen. You've got an unnumbered mob with clubs and, and whatever, and you've got two swords. You remember at the Last Supper, they looked around and they managed to find two swords if you remember that. 
One of them Peter had, and we don't know who had the other one. And so, one of the disciples asked Jesus, shall we strike? We're going to take our two swords. happened here, you have